Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jake from today's iPhone.com and here's what's going on this week. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to talk about this week is the Chronic Dev team finally released an untethered jailbreak for devices running iOS 4.2.1. Now the program, which is called Green Poison, has a set of instructions built in when you start your jailbreak, and it's all relatively straightforward. Now when it first came out, it was only for Mac, but fortunately since then they've released a PC version as well. We have links to both downloads, as well as sets of instructions over at the post on todaysiphone.com. Keep in mind that if you want to unlock your device, that involves a separate set of instructions, so don't get those confused. Now remember that this is still a beta, so there could be some problems, but the reviews online say that it's pretty stable. Now I've heard about some problems with Cydia downloading kinda slow, but I wanna know what you guys think. If anybody out there has already done this, let me know how it went and how your device is running now down in the comment section below. Now unfortunately, the jailbreak for iOS 4.2.1 seems to have come a little bit late, as rumors suggest that iOS 4.3 will be announced on February 14th. Now this Valentine's Day is a Monday, and Apple usually releases software updates on Mondays, but some other rumors floating around are February 13th, February 16th, and while nothing is certain, I feel pretty confident saying that iOS 4.3 will be out very soon. Some of the major updates on iOS 4.3 include improved AirPlay support, as well as various bug fixes and some subscription-based apps. Now there's also some rumors floating around this week that the iPad 2 will have a launch that coincides with iOS 4.3. Though, if Apple sticks to their usual yearly product cycle, this seems a bit early for the iPad 2. Now speaking of the iPad 2, it seems as though the guys over at 9to5Mac and iFixYourEye have got their hands on a leaked screen for the next generation Apple tablet. Now according to them, the screen is the same size as the first generation iPad, which is 9.7 inches diagonally. However, this screen is 1mm thinner than the first screen, which could lend to a thinner iPad. They also note that the build quality of this screen is a lot higher than the first one. Unfortunately, there's no word on the resolution of the screen yet, but it probably is going to be the same as the first generation iPad, because even though a retina display on the iPad would be awesome, it's just not likely yet. Now this thing is covered in barcodes and serial numbers that are very similar to the first generation iPad screen, so this really seems like the first credible information about the iPad iPad 2 that we've got so far. Okay, moving on, as most of you know, the Verizon iPhone went on online pre-sale to existing Verizon customers on February 3rd. Now, Verizon has released a statement saying that the iPhone has provided them with their highest first day sales in the company's history. In fact, Dan Mead, president and CEO of Verizon Wireless, said that in just the first two hours, they sold more phones than any other first day launch in the company's history. Now, keep in mind that this phone went on sale at 3 a.m., so the hours he's talking about are 3 to 5 in the morning. They can sell that many phones in the middle of the night to only Verizon customers, I don't even know how many people are going to be lining up outside Apple and Verizon stores on February 10th when the phone goes on sale to everybody. Alright, moving on, in application news, News Corp's iPad-only newspaper, The Daily, was announced this week. Now this is the first true digital newspaper and it provides you with anything from articles, to HD video, to updated weather forecasts, to Twitter feeds. The interface on this thing is cool and sleek in a way only Apple could facilitate. Now the reviews for this thing are really good. Our own Jake Sorobsky gave this thing 4 out of 5 stars and you can check out his full written review over at todaysiphone.com. Now this is important for another reason, because it's the first time in-app subscriptions have been available to iOS users. The Daily is going to cost you 99 cents a week. Now with the inception of the digital newspaper, Apple laid out some guidelines for developers so they can use in-app subscriptions in their applications. Now these guidelines include, subscriptions can be set over time periods, like weeks or months or even a year, depending on what the developer wants. You'll be able to auto-renew your subscription, and if you do choose to auto-renew your subscription, the money won't be taken out of your account until 24 hours before. And if the price of the subscription goes up, your auto renew will be disabled. And finally, I have some good news for anybody who's ever had trouble getting the device fixed because of water damage. After a 13 year old girl sued Apple because they refused to fix her phone due to water damage, Apple has loosened up on the policy regarding the water damage indicators. Basically, if they check your device and tell you that the indicators said that you have water damage, but you dispute the claim and there are no external signs of water damage, then you're still eligible for your warranty. Now this is really good news, especially since the indicators that Apple puts in their devices have been said to be really sensitive and can be tripped by anything from using your phone at the gym or steam from the shower. But still, you should definitely be careful with your devices and keep them away from water at all costs. Okay, well that's it for this week, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and feel free to follow me on Twitter if you have any comments or questions at TIPJ. And don't forget, for more news, views, and reviews, definitely check out todaysiphone.com.